friend of mine said, you know, you're the most famous man in the world. I said, no, I'm not. No, he said, no, who's more famous than you? You are the most famous man in the world. What are you talking about? Who's more famous? I said, Jesus Christ. Welcome to part two of the GOP and G-O-D series. This time we got to talk about Mr. Donald J. Trump. Former president, number 45, trying to become president, number 47. A lot of people have been asking since the Vivek Ramaswamy video where I shared how he's a Hindu, but with Judeo-Christian values. In our tradition, we say Jesus, sign, Jesus Christ is a son of God. I understand that's different than saying he's the son of God, but we share the same value set in common. I think it's important to really know what these presidential candidates on the Republican side, because the Republican side is the one that talks about faith issues all the time. How has your faith grown since you decided in 2015 to run for president? They try to cater to evangelicals, they try to cater to people like me, and probably you watching this. God is real. God is real. I have great relationship with God. A few of the things we're gonna talk about is Trump and his connection with many false teachers. He has a cult-like following. He has had some bright moments. He's had some good things to say about the Bible, or at least positive things to say. He seems to be very theologically unsound. But I thought this was interesting to start out with. Let's look at this video. I am Christian. I'm a Protestant. I'm very proud of it. Presbyterian, to be exact. I'm Presbyterian. Boy, that's down the middle of the road, folks, in all fairness. I mean, Seventh-day Adventist, I don't know about. I have great relationship with God. I have great relationship with uh, the evangelicals. And I go to church a lot. Always on Christmas, always on Easter, uh, always when there's a major occasion. And during the, during the Sundays, I'm a Sunday church person. I like to do the right thing where I don't have to actually ask for forgiveness. When we go in church and... And when I drink my little wine, which is about the only wine I drink, and have my little cracker, I guess that's a form of asking for forgiveness. And I do that as often as possible because I feel cleansed. If I do something wrong, I think I just try and make it right. I don't bring God into that picture. My wife and I pray for you. Thank you. Well, I need it probably more than anybody in this room. Interesting, there was a book that was written by David Brody. He's a journalist. I'm going to show you an MSNBC article where he jumps on and talks about his book, The Faith of Donald Trump. Faith of Donald Trump, David. Well, I asked him that specifically. We had an interview in the Oval Office for this book. He says he is a believer. Uh, Mike Pence, two interviews with him, uh, very strong talking about how this president is a believer and absolutely 100%. Uh, Paula White, his spiritual advisor, you know all about Paula White. Uh, she said she has had in-depth conversations with this president, very, very in-depth conversations and saying, I can tell you 100%, that's a quote, 100%, he is a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. So but, from a journalistic... But, 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 From a journalistic but, but perspective, what do you we go think, ahead and though? do that. Mm -hmm. The big thing there is Paula White. Paula White, who I'm going to talk about in just a little bit. This is a little, little teaser. I'll talk about Kenneth Copeland and other false prophets because there's been plenty of false prophecies. People who say, for example, that the 2020 election, you know, they say, well, anybody who prophesied that Trump won, whether it be a prophet, an intercessor, a Christian, or just a guy on the street, you know, um, if you said that, you're wrong. Well, wait a minute. If you believe that the media has been telling us the truth all of this time, and you believe that a guy that was hiding out in his basement can't gather a crowd, he wasn't even around the crowds, could gather more than 80 million votes, well, you might want to re-examine -exa your theology. Who was Trump's pastor? Trump's pastor, he says, was Norman Vincent Peale. You might have heard of the book, The Power of Positive Thinking. This is what Trump had to say at a family leadership summit. The great Norman Vincent Peale was my pastor. The Power of Positive Thinking. Everybody's heard of Norman Vincent Peale. So the question is, who is Norman Vincent Peale? So Norman Vincent Peale was basically a universalist. Norman Vincent Peale, basically, what is universalism? It's basically that everybody goes to heaven. As long as you're pretty much a good person, you believe in a higher power, you're going to heaven. It's very much Richard Rohr. You can do some more research on that. But according to Peale, this is what's interesting too, is people, that power of positive thinking is, according to him, people can change future outcomes and events just by thinking them into existence. It's very much a Creflo dollar thought that you are a little G God. You are a God within 
yourself. You are God's little G. You are God's because you came from God and you are God's. You're not just human. The only human part about you is this physical body that you live in. It's a very dangerous anti-biblical view. So the power of positive thinking promotes self-confidence and faith in oneself, very much self-help gospel. And it naturally leads to this false belief of a, a law of attraction. So it's very new age. So you can create things with your words. That's what we're going to get into word of faith, uh, prosperity gospel in just a little bit. But this is what Norman Vincent Peale wrote. When you expect the best, you realize a magnet magnetic force in your mind, which by law of attraction leads to bring the best of you. So of course, there's nothing biblical about those things whatsoever. And it almost sounds a lot more Star Wars than it does biblical. You have this force and you can control it with your words if you just think positively. These are things where people go and listen to people like Norman Vincent Peale and they're like, well, I'm thinking so many positive thoughts. You know, why is my bank account still so low? Why am I not getting the job? Why am I not getting the girl? All these things, like why is life so all over the place? I'm thinking positively. It's because it's un, it's unbiblical. And then that's where it gets into Trump and the prosperity gospel. He's very much connected with a lot of false teachers in the prosperity gospel movement. So what is a prosperity gospel? Uh, I love gotquestions.org, highly suggest them. So at the heart of the word of faith movement, that's what it's also known as as well, is there's a belief of this force of faith. Like I was talking about earlier, there's power in your words. Uh, it's believed that words can be used to manipulate the faith force. <laughs> There you go, Star Wars, and thus actually create what they believe scripture promises, health and wealth. That's very much what the prosperity gospel is built in. If you only give so much to this preacher, you're going to get so much back. Um, it's promising that life is going to be good. Actually, what the Bible promises is that you will be persecuted in Jesus's name. Life will be difficult. You are on the straight and narrow. It is not the easy path. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Uh, and then also, too, there's laws supposedly governing the faith force are said to operate independently of God's sovereign will and that God himself is subject to these laws. That's something that Paula White brings up as well as like God can't do anything without you, which is another very anti-biblical uh, way of going about your theology. And finally, this is nothing short of idolatry. Uh, turning our faith and extension ourselves into God's. Something too I know I've shared uh, quite a bit is it's so nice when you have regular voters like myself uh, that are Christian. And I'm assuming this lady's Christian that's asking this, but it was a town hall just a few months ago in Iowa. And obviously Iowa is that place where you're going to get a lot of these faith questions. Donald Trump's response was very egocentric. It also went to show again that Paula White is another one of his spiritual advisors. There was no clear answer about where he is on his faith journey. And again, he makes it all about him. My question is, how has your faith grown since you decided in 2015 to run for president? And who has mentored you in your faith journey? Great question. It's such a great question. You know, I've seen so much heartache and turmoil. I was a developer and I did other things and, you know, I had a wonderful, I had a wonderful life before all this stuff. I didn't know what a grand jury was. I didn't know what a subpoena. What is a subpoena? I had a wonderful life. I'm so glad. They asked me the other day a little different question. Are you glad you did it? Was so You had a great life. Are you glad you did it? I couldn't be more glad. I am so happy I did it because I've made America great. We can do it again. Right now we don't. We are not a great country. We are not a great country, but I've gotten to know because of this evangelical. We're almost a minute into this answer, and he hasn't answered the question at all. It's all about like, oh, I didn't have to do this, and it's me, 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 me. Let's keep going. I, I mean, I know so many people, and they feel so good about themselves and their family, and they base it on religion. I had never had that kind of an experience where I got to know so many. And Franklin Graham and Paula White, I mean, I know so many people that are so incredible, religious people, and not just Christians, not just evangelicals, 
you know, when I look at the Catholic faith, you take a look at what the FBI, no, but look at what the FBI is doing to Catholics. They've made them like the enemy. They've made them, it's, it's horrible. Still has not answered the question at all. He has answered a part of it, mentioning Paula White again. Don't worry, we're going to get to the Paula White stuff in just a second, but we'll wrap this up. I have met some of the finest people that I wouldn't have had the privilege of meeting if I weren't president, and they're religious leaders, and they really are incredible people. Boom, that's it. And... You really just don't know where Trump is on his faith journey whatsoever. And that's that's one of the latest videos I'm going to show you in this entire breakdown of what Trump believes about the Bible, Jesus Christ, and the Christian faith. That's where we get into Trump's National Faith Advisory Board. So that was started by Paula White. Don't worry, we're still getting the Paula White. See, you can see in this photo you have um, so many different prosperity gospel preachers. I'll break those down in just a second. You have people like Jensen Franklin, prosperity gospel. Another photo you look at here, you got Sean Foyt. He's part of the new apostolic reformation. Brian Houston, you looking at this video is just to the left. Hillsong is a lot more of a business than it is a church. It's very much in the prosperity gospel. Uh, another photo here, you see Robert Morris to the left. That's on the National Faith Advisory Board's website it says and there's really not much you're going to get from the website right now when you look at it, it just says the national national faith advisory board will proudly continue the work we began at the white house through partnering and bringing together a diverse coalition of faith leaders to amplify their voices to impact our nation and the woman you see there in red that is paula white now the question is who is paula white Paula White is very much prosperity gospel. Paula White partners with other false teachers. But this is the person you are always going to see around Trump. Multiple videos have mentioned it. Trump has mentioned it himself. This is the most important spiritual leader he has in his life when it comes to the Christian faith. Let's look at Paula White. What is she all about? Wherever I go, God rules. When I walk on White House grounds, God walks on White House grounds. I had every right and authority to declare the White House as holy ground because I was standing there and where I stand is holy. To say no to President Trump would be saying no to God. And, and I won't do that. We are in a spiritual war right now. Let every demonic network that has aligned itself against the purpose, against the calling of President Trump, let it be broken, let it be torn down in the name of Jesus. You want me to tell you what my thoughts are? The thoughts of the King of Kings, the thoughts of the Lord of Lords. I'm downloading heaven. Hey! Well, that's probably about enough of that. I, another thing too is you, you have to understand that um, this prosperity gospel is very Americanized. It's very much thinking that America is, is the new Israel. I know we're just talking about Trump, but just a little bit more information for you guys. And something, too, is uh, I'm not going to get into all the false prophecies about Donald Trump supposedly supposed to be elected. And, you know, biblically speaking, if someone prophesies that Donald Trump is going to become president and if he doesn't become president... You are a false prophet. You know what happened to false prophets in the Bible? They got killed. But something that was wild was <laughs> Paula, Paula White, uh, she has an unbiblical way of looking at uh, the spiritual gift of tongues. I truly believe, biblically speaking, that tongues was a known language. That was something that on the day of Pentecost that the Holy Spirit gave the apostles the ability to speak in different ways tongues, different languages. You can look at the original language of these passages as well. And, and that's, I think, what you would find. Um, something you say here is she started to, you're going to see in the New Apostolic Reformation a movement is not only the power to speak things into existence, kind of like Norman uh, Vincent Peale would talk about, but also the ability to kind of tell God what to do. You're going to hear a lot of decree and declare. And then the power of angels, the power to call down angels. Check out this crazy video. 
The Lord says it is done. The Lord says it is done. The Lord says it is done. For I hear victory, 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 victory in the quarters of heaven. In the quarters of heaven, victory, 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 victory. For angels are being released right now. Angels are being dispatched right now. Hamanda ata ata raka te de baka sanda ata ambo osa kata rite eke banda ata rike didi asha ta. For angels have even dispatched been dispatched from Africa right now, Africa right now, Africa right now, from Africa right now. They're coming here. They're coming here in the name of Jesus from South America. They're coming here. They're coming here. Probably about uh, enough of, of all that, but it's basically just a lot of like, just it's signs of wonders. It's just look at all these supernatural things that that can happen. It's just not rooted in scripture at all. And this is who Trump goes to. So obviously Trump is not saying these things, but he's freely saying, this is the person I go to for spiritual guidance. This is the person I look to on faith issues. This is the person I believe, he's not saying these words, but I would guess feeling like this is the anointed person I'm gonna go to uh, and allow uh, to speak into my life to hopefully point me to Christ, point me in the right direction, whatever it may be, yikes.